Hi and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is just going to go on about the um, distillation products that can be found in crude oil and they are mainly alkanes. So I'm just going to put a picture up um, here that's available on Wikipedia and sites like that so you can have a look and I'll put a picture up on the website as well so you can have a look at this diagram. It's quite an interesting diagram really. Basically we take crude oil which is um, the rotten remains of, of um, animals or organic ma uh, species of millen millennia and this is usually found deep underground and it's, a, it's, a, it's usually a really dark black um, tarry type of oil as, as a crude oil but it's, it's actually rich in loads of different types of small molecules now these small molecules are mainly alkanes um, and I'll explain what they are in a second but there's also cycloalkanes present and what's called aromatics and there's also some larger molecule called asphaltines and they uh, you probably come across the word asphalt and that's used to um, I'll put a picture up actually I've got a picture here asphalt is actually used for uh, putting down um, on the roads as, as tarmac and things like that Okay, so, so this asphalt is the larger molecules that can't escape this process. But it's got a use, obviously, as, as on, on, on the road and making roads. But let's have a look at the crude oil. The crude oil is a mixture. It means it's got lots of different molecules within it, making up um, the substance we call crude oil. And what um, industrial chemists do, they take this crude oil, they put it into a hot furnace and they blast it with heat and it then goes into this chamber here and this is called a, a distillation chamber and this will separate out the um, small molecules according to, to the molecular weight. Now the molecular weight will govern how volatile they are, I'll just put that word up, volatile volatile basically means the ability to become a gas so if this is a liquid so it's liquid in this case liquid going to a gas and the more volatile a compound is the more easy it is for, to go from a liquid to a gas uh, at a different temperature. So temperature obviously affects the ability of liquids to turn into gases because the more energy we put in as heat, the more a uh, liquid, which is, so these are molecules in a beaker. If that's a liquid full of little molecules and it has the characteristic um, properties of a liquid, so it flows and takes up the volume that it's occupying, we put energy into there in the form of heat so we start putting, oops, just change the colour of this pen. So we start putting um, energy in there in, in the form of heat, say. Get some heat in there, like that. Then they'll get more excited because they can move around quicker. And as they move around quicker, they get enough energy to break apart from each other because they, they like being around each other. And it's almost as though the small molecules are holding hands. But then eventually they'll get enough energy to escape so they'll stop wanting to hold hands and they'll escape like this and that's the moment they actually become a gas and they keep some of that energy and they'll lose it to other molecules that are cooler in the atmosphere and then they'll eventually become a, a liquid again if, if they're um, at room temperature they're a liquid because there's no energy uh, keep going into them so that's basically how a liquid becomes a gas by heating it and that's what's happening here but what we're able to do is as it goes up the column it gets cooler and cooler and cooler because the heat's down here so as it gets cooler and cooler and cooler we only get certain size molecules coming out at certain points in this uh, distillation chamber here and that's really good and that's called fractional distillation and I'll just write that here in, in different color here we are fractional an A, fractional distillation. 
Okay, so it's fractional distillation, and all that really means is we're distilling, and that means we're converting a liquid to a gas and then cooling it back down to a liquid again. That's what distilling means. Because when, when it comes out of these holes, it basically turns back into a liquid because it's not at them temperatures anymore, it's at room temperatures there. And that's what distillation means. The fractional bit is because we're turning this crude oil, which is one, into different fractions. So it's, it, it distills according to basically the molecular weight. Now if we look at the molecular weight, that's really how heavy those individual molecules are, you get some interesting um, uh, data. From a chemistry point of view, it gets really interesting because um, all the science you've been taught, I'll just leave that up there actually, I'll just get rid of this. All the science you've been taught actually works, um, which is a good thing. So you have the fuel oils here, and I've got a picture. And you've probably seen this, you know, your mums or dads might have, um, or whoever you live with might have um, these um, oil cans in the garage or something like that for, um, you know, for, 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 for your car or for your bike or something like that. So that's a fuel oil, and that'll come out about here. So they're quite large molecular weights, okay? So if, we, if we're thinking about how many carbons are in this molecule, and I've not actually explained what an alkane is yet, but I will do that any second now before I move on to the other ones. If we look at this, this has got about 50 carbons, roughly. About 50 carbons there in the molecule. Now I'm just going to explain what um, an alkane is. An alkane is basically defined as a hydrocarbon that means it's a molecule made out of carbon and hydrogen. So it's a hydrocarbon, and I'll just write that over here. Hydrocarbon. Okay. Now, if we take methane, which is the smallest of the hydrocarbons, that is made up of one carbon carbon plus four hydrogens and that's because carbon likes to have four bonds around it for alkanes so we actually have a rule straight away from this which we can apply now it's not a rule on its own because we need to test it out but it does actually apply and I'll show you now so if we count the carbons we have C1 H4 okay that's a C not a G just delete that. Just get rid of that bit. Right, okay, so that's C1H4. Now the next alkane, the next hydrocarbon in the list, has got two carbons, and that's basically how we um, we label these hydrocarbons. We, we count the number of carbons present. So the next one is C2. Remember, carbon um, likes to have four bonds. Now when we're making a hydrocarbon, when we add another carbon, we actually connect the carbon to the carbon. It's a carbon chain. It's not connected to any hydrogen. So hydrogen can only have one bond to it. If you're unsure about chemical bonding, just have a look at one of the other tutorials on chemical bonding and, and you'll understand how um, atoms form bonds with other atoms. I won't go into the details of that here. So that is now C2, and if we count them, we've got six hydrogens. We've got three on this carbon and three on that one. So this is now C2H6. And we can go on, so that's called ethane. Ethane. And this one here is called, I'll do it in a different colour, it's called methane. Okay, so that's the one with one carbon is called uh, methane, and the one with two carbons, draw green, two carbons becomes ethane. Now this bit is important. The meth and the eth 
how important the M bit if I hope you can see yellowy green color this N bit here means it's an alkane and that means it f follows this kind of formula and I'm just gonna write that formula in a minute you notice S N we actually call it ethane so we've got the N bit there so that tells me it's an alkane it's not an alkene it's not an alkyne and I'll explain what they are very briefly in a second but it's not important for this now the formula we have here we had one carbon gives us four we have two carbons gives us six and the actual formula for any alkane is C N H N sorry H 2 N plus 2 okay so the formula is I get myself a color draw a nice cloud the formula is an alkane must have the chemical formula C N H 2 N plus 2 well, what's N well N is basically the number of carbons so you see we have one carbon becomes methane there it is 2n plus 2 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4 same for ethane 2 carbons n equals 2 and we're just substituting the number into n so 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 and that is an alkane and the the name of the molecule ends in N so alkanes have that formula and they, they have a name and then the end I'll just put dash ends okay so that's what defines what an alkane is and that's a small molecule hydrocarbon remember here it is hydrocarbon I'll draw another balloon up here or cloud even okay hydrocarbon hydrocarbons are high, uh, molecules made of carbon and hydrogen and one particular form of that, uh, the simplest form sometimes called saturated hydrocarbons because the carbon here is fully saturated with other elements around it saturated so are called alkanes I'll just write saturated because you might come across that again you'll certainly come across saturated and unsaturated fats on um, on things like margarine tubs and, and things like that you might see that or um, if you look at the um, the information you get on food these days it'll tell you how many saturated and unsaturated fats you have and that's what this means okay so that's alkanes so going back to the story now I'll just delete this I move it somewhere I'll delete it get rid of that okay going back to the story now the larger molecular weight oils so the larger alkanes are or for the asphalts and the paraffin wax that we have around 50 carbons so if we draw them out I'm not going to draw one of them out because it take me a long time but they would be like C C C C like this 50 times like this okay and they all have hydrogen some and you can see where the 2n plus 2 comes from because if you look at the ones there it's only the the plus 2 comes from the n bits so if we draw this one you can quickly find out so make sure carbon's got four atoms around it for an alkane if I just circle in red two of these that's where the plus two bit comes in onto that formula we had before and you can see then it's uh, each carbon carries two hydrogens with it so the plus two is just because the terminal carbons have got an extra one because they don't have an extra carbon so it's quite an easy formula to come up with really I suppose if you think about it 
Okay, so we've got, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's only six. So imagine that going on for 50. And that's how long that um, hydrocarbon is. So it's a very, very long molecule. And the bigger a molecule gets, the more it turns into a solid or, or what becomes a liquid first and then turns into a solid. So methane, which is really, really tiny, it's only got one carbon, is actually a gas. Ethane's a gas, propane's a gas, and butane is a gas which is at room temperature is, is it's getting to the point where it's, it might want to start becoming a liquid, but um, certainly if it gets um, very cold it'll, it'll, it'll start cooling off and um, becoming more liquid-like. Um, so up to butane, the gases, and then we start getting around, um, so that's so I mean, I'm not actually explaining what this is. So we have methane. I'll just put meth. Methane. Ethane. Propane. Butane. Uh, pentane. I've really forgotten. Pentane. Hexane. And so on. Because that is heptane, octane, nonane, and I'll leave it there. So if I draw numbers next to them, that's one, two, three, four, five. This is how many carbons they've got in the molecule. Six, seven, eight, nine. So you can see where the names come from. You might have heard of these as well, because Alkanes, this, this and the N for alkanes, I've, I've only written the um, prefixes, it's called prefix, the, the first part of the name. So I've, I've only written uh, meth because for an alkane it means that you put N at the end, so it's methane, or we call it methane. Um, but just skipping ahead a few years, so when you start learning about other types of groups and other types of molecules, you think you everyone's heard of ethanol and methanol and that's where that comes from ethanol methanol is just um, like methane but it's got an OH group an alcohol group we call and same with ethanol it's just got one of the groups is a, an OH group so methanol ethanol propanol butanol and that's where all these names come from it just means how many carbons we've got anyway I've digressed a little bit but this will help us hopefully explain the order of this so propane and butane are here. So these four here will pop off the top of here. They're the most volatile, they're most uh, more like gases. So these are the gases at room temperature. I remember we've heated it so they're gonna come out as gases as well. It's 20 degrees there, but they're all still gases. Pentane and hexane, they're gonna be in between here. They'll come off, they're, they're more like liquid. So heptane is liquid. Octane. Now we're talking between between pentane and octane. These are called petrols. So petrol is actually made out of these, and this octane is more likely to be in your car, to be honest. But um, the, these are what um, this is the petrol range here. Kerosenes. So so if I draw a circle around there, actually, I'm trying to make that a bit more grouped. So you're starting to see a pattern. So the the larger the molecules get now, they're starting to come off a bit lower, which means a higher temperature. Kerosene. Well, this is more like aviation fuel. It's, it's stuff that you know for aeroplanes and things like that. So let's get a few pictures. I went through the effort of getting all these pictures, and I'm not I'm not putting them on there now. Here we are. So I just I just shrink that in a little bit. There we are. So that's a car for petrol. Aviation fuel comes here. There's a nice little aeroplane. I'll just draw an arrow to that. And then the molecular weight gets longer and longer and longer. And when I say molecular weight, I mean we're adding more carbon, so it's getting heavier. And so we get down here, we're getting diesels. We have probably seen diesels, trucks run off diesel oil. You might even have a car that runs off diesel oil. Okay, so then we're getting these, and then fuels, and these are getting harder to burn. You know, they, they, they don't really set on fire as much 
um, but they can do I suppose um, under different conditions so as you can see um, this is what crude oil so there's one product that we can um, drill out of the earth that's come from um, you know it's basically it's come from the um, remains of of uh, organic life forms of millions and millions of years um, and then we've been able to dig it out and extract all these different components from it and if you look at what one barrel of oil which costs a fortune gives us and how it affects our lives actually so it gives us our roads it gives us our, um, our lubricants it gives us uh, our fuels for our vehicles our transportation and it you know, gives us gas for cooking and, and things like that but most of all all these other components can be turned into other things um, and I won't go into them now but a lot of plastics um, and polymer materials are, you know the, the, the molecules actually come from these kind of uh, these, these, these kind of uh, origins really that's the word I was looking for so oh, I've got another picture before I leave I've got to put that in. okay so that's butane so that's crude oil and that's the end of the tutorial I will go into um, another tutorial to explain the um, nomenclature so the naming of um, small molecules and I also go into alkenes I never, I never covered alkenes today um, so crude oil is actually made out of uh, alkanes like we've discussed here and cycloalkanes so things like this so that's C6 you can have a cyclic structure as well which is which will look like a boat if I can draw it right so each one of those points is a carbon and then each one's got a hydrogen on it like that okay so it's made you know you can get these kind of things as well popping in so they're all different lovely structures and for me that's that's what makes organic chemistry I love all these structures I love looking at these uh, wonderful designs really okay so things like that can pop in as well and aromatic compounds so aromatic compounds have things like benzene rings and all like that I'll save that for another tutorial um, I think I think this is fine for now the crude oil going to alkanes and how it affects our lives so thank you for watching and do tune into the other tutorials